dumbbell pullovers are absolutely freaking killing your gains, you know? Okay, all right, so we're not gonna go that far. Okay, they're not killing your gains, but they're not the best back exercise. And specifically, they're not the best lat exercise. And that's gonna be the topic of this video. So why should we stop doing the dumbbell pullover and what should we do instead? So this comes down to a very basic understanding of lat mechanics, okay? So if I'm using a dumbbell, okay, what does a dumbbell wanna do? Just wants to hopefully fall toward the center of the earth. If gravity is working okay, that's what it wants to do, okay? So what that means is that if I get down into this bottom position like this, it just wants to pull me in this direction. In terms of scapular motion, what will that encourage? Well, if I put my hands here, okay, and many, any of you can test this, lie down on a bench, lie down on your bed right now if you're watching in bed for whatever reason, okay? And just imagine, okay, where would my shoulder blades move? They would move backward. In other words, they would move into scapular retraction. In other words, the force of the dumbbell wants to push my scaps back this way down toward the floor. So you have to ask, what is going to resist that motion of the scaps getting pinned backward and downward toward the floor? Something that pulls them forward, right? Like the pecs, okay? And so it's not so much of a coincidence that this exercise end up feeling like a lot of pecs and a lot of triceps instead of a lot of lats. So do the lats cross the front side of this joint and contribute to some degree to pulling the arm down like this? Yes, but they gain a big advantage to do that when the arm is you know, kind of like over here, not so much overhead, number one. And number two, the dumbbell, specifically in this case, is loading the opposite motion that we actually want to load and stretch the lat. So what that means is like, if I were to do a curl, okay, and my goals were instead of the biceps uh, to train triceps, like you're literally loading the opposite direction that the muscles would actually have that thing uh, you know, move. So for example, in terms of actual lat motion, if I'm doing a pull down here, what the lats do is they retract, right? So they actually retract and depress. So this would be part retraction, part depression, depending on how you're defining it, okay? But the lats basically will take the arm from here and just shove it down to the back pockets. They'll move the whole shoulder girdle, right? And in tandem, obviously, with moving the arm. If the arm is in front of the body, they will pull the shoulder girdle and the arm backward, okay? So think about the dumbbell pullover. The dumbbell pullover asks us to do the opposite. It asks us to go from retraction to protraction forward, right? So it's loading this motion, which is literally the opposite of this motion, okay? So how do we better load that and what can we do? Well, I'm so glad you asked and we can come over to my handy dandy cable stack over here. Very simple, very first principle based, right? Using a cable is a clear way to demonstrate what might or might not be super specific to a given motion. So if I'm in a functional trainer or I'm in a cable column, it can be as simple as basically just using one side as your support and using the other side as the direction that you can load, okay? So here's a great, great way, assume that I'm just right next to this, right? So I would be really over here, boom, other hand up next to it. That's all I'm doing. Right, it's really just as simple as that. It's a simple pull down, right? So to get closer to the camera, right? Here's something that will load more of that vertical motion, right? And if I wanted to load more of the horizontal thing, I would literally just stand up and do more of a horizontal thing. In either case, I'm loading the opposite motion of a dumbbell pullover, which is I'm having a resistance pull my arm forward or I'm having a resistance pull my arm upward. I'm not having a resistance pull my arm backward, okay? Because if I, if I do that, right, pecs, other stuff get involved, okay? Now, in addition to this, make sure that when you're pulling, you can't see from that perspective, whether it's one or two arms, you're staying relatively tighter to the body, okay? And that's just because uh, essentially of where the lats originate, how they wrap around the ribs, they'll basically pull the arm nice and tight to the body. And the most efficient way to load, whether you're talking about a horizontal motion or a vertical motion is tighter to the body here, tighter to the body here, okay? Now you can do the single arm thing that I just did, or if you have a regular pull down, go ahead, two arms at once, arms more narrow, just like that, with an emphasis, of course, on moving the shoulder girdle, right? This stuff, in addition to the arm, right? So whether it's one arm, whether it's two arm, these principles apply. Um, and whether it's you know something like a machine or something like a, a cable pull down, like I said, or if it's a dumbbell, right? And you're doing a dumbbell row, hell, we can just go over right back to the old dumbbell bench setup then you can just apply the same principles and you can't really train the most vertical portions of the lats unless you're upside down, but you can be right here, a nice wide stance, wide base of support, pull right to the hip, right? And so from the side, it would look something 
like this, right? So that would load those upper lats. Why? Because the load pulls the shoulder like this and I can resist against it this way. Again, if you wanted to load yourself uh, with you know, a free weight situation with a you know, more vertical lat, more high to low type of lat thing, you could either do a pull up or something similar, uh, or you could hang upside down and do a little trapeze act and then you know, row dumbbells while you're upside down. Uh, that's probably not as practical or as progressible, but it is an option nonetheless. And hopefully this demonstration of the pullover versus the pull down can help all of you sort of uh, put together the pieces of anatomy and resistance and what actually is occurring in these different exercises. And then as a consequence of that, how you can be more specific to grow in big lats. If you like this video and you wanna learn more from me, please consider enrolling in my online anatomy and biomechanics course. The course contains over 15 hours specifically dedicated to improving your understanding of anatomy and physics and how it applies to lifting weights. Over 3000 students have enrolled in this course and have reported back that it's the most easy to digest material that doesn't include any sort of boring textbook lecture that you might normally find in a typical college curriculum. So if you wanna improve your ability to lift and as a consequence, grow muscle more easily and reduce your pain in the gym, check out the link in the description.